So, hemopoietic stem cells, also known as bone marrow stem cells, are recently discovered cells that have revolutionized treatment of diseases and brought the world into a new age of realistic compatibilities and solutions. In the following video, the biotechnology of these miracle cells, as many call them, will be presented and explained. So let's talk about stem cells in general before we get into um, hema hematopoietic stem cells. So stem cells are very different from almost every other cell. Stem cells are unspecialized cells, while most cells are specialized for a unique job. Let's look at an example to see how this works. So we have red blood cells. Now they're specialized and have the important job of carrying oxygen throughout the circulatory system. These red blood cells have some of their genes turned off because they don't need to use them. One of the genes that they have turned off is the gene to grow hair. You don't want hairy blood cells, nor do you need it. So that gene is turned off. With an adult stem cell, all the genes are turned on but only for a specific type of organ or tissue, and they serve no specific function but to turn into specialized cells when the body needs them. So for instance, if the body needs to repair liver tissue, stem cells will be cued by the body to turn into that specific cell type. So that, that was stem cells. So now this is... Hematopoietic stem cells, or HSCs, and they're a specific type of stem cell. They're formed during the embryonic development, like most cells, but they can only be found in bone marrow and uh, umbilical cord blood as an adult. Um, some cool facts is that hemato means blood and poetic means making of. And um, further on in this PowerPoint, you'll understand that hematopoietic stem cells can only make uh, can only specialize into different types of blood cells, which is the next document, I mean, which is the next slide. So, these HSCs can turn into different types of blood cells when the genes are activated or deactivated. HSCs have two methods of replication. They're, they can either form exact copies of themselves and replacing unspecialized through cell division called mitosis, or they can differentiate and replicate into specialized cells. So the diagram shows the different blood cells that HSCs can differentiate and replicate into, like basophils, neutrophils, lymphocytes, um, and red blood cells. Now, having a variety of transformations um, helps with the variety of treatments that these HSCs can be transplanted to help treat. So... Um, that's really the main idea of this PowerPoint, um, how to acquire stem cells for transplant. So that's the next slide. So there are two ways, two main ways to acquire stem cells for transplant. The first way is to have an allogenic donor, which is a donor who has blood cell makeup very close to the patients. And so stem cells are surgically removed out of the donor's bone, usually pelvic bone under general anesthesia. Um, a needle is used to get the to get to the very center of the bone and the blood is drawn out from there. This technique is called harvesting because um, the blood is then frozen and stored until later use. So with a donor other than the patient themselves, the immune system is then repressed as uh, is then repressed during this procedure to reduce the chances of graft versus host disease so this is when the new cells do not recognize the host or the pat uh, or the patient and try to attack the body cells with a repressed immune system the new cells are less likely to be threatened by the foreign environment the next one uh, the next method of transplant is called autologous, um, which requires removal and retransfusion of the patient's own cells. This, this transplant is different from, than the usual surgical process of allogenetic uh, genetic um, transplant. It's a process called PBSCT, or peripheral 
blood cell, uh, blood stem cell transplant, and it's used. So with this process, a technique called apheresis is used. The blood is drawn from the patient's arm, and the blood is separated into blood cells and stem cells by a machine. Then the then the regular blood cells are returned back into the patient through IV, and the stem cells are stored until after chemotherapy and radiation is used to kill off the bad cells. After malignant cells are gone, the patient's own cells are reintroduced to create new and healthy ones in the body. HNCs are normally transplanted into the patient's with blood and bone marrow diseases, such as leukemia and, uh, like, sickle cell anemia, and other diseases like that. So, uh, the results of the stem cell uh, transplants may vary from patient to patient, and some may have little to no side effects and good results, while some may have serious complications. It depends on the patient and the method of transplant. Risks of transplantation include infection, um, graft versus host disease, and the fact that stem cells taken from adults may not be perfect due to age and environment of the donor. Some of these complications could be fatal to those already weakened by the disease. And also, procedures are also very costly at upwards about $200,000 or more depending on the type. However, there are stories of recovery because of stem cell therapy and there are benefits to the practice and such as improved immunity and cancer remission. But at the same time, there is no way to guarantee a successful stem cell transplant. So I hope that PowerPoint and presentation helped you with hematopoietic stem cells, stem cells in general, and the transplant, uh, the different methods of transplantation with stem cells. Here are citations and references. This PowerPoint was made by Jasper Carr and Maddie Spinelli. Um, and so thank you for watching.